Hi everybody, Declination Dan here. Cosmic Charlie here. How's it going guys? Charlie, you got a hat on? No, you got no hat on. No, Good. no hat today. So rock and roll. There you go. I can see the beautiful face of, of right. Cosmic Charlie now, so that's a that's wonderful right. thing. Um, so we're down here in our new revamped kind of studio. And uh, we got some good stuff going on today. We're going to take uh, Cosmic Charlie's 8-inch and we're going to add something called Bob's Knobs to it. Um, this is a really cool little little knobs to help you collimate. We're going to go over that too in this video. Charlie? Yeah, uh, Bob's Knobs, guys, are just basically going to replace the screws that are in the front already on this little uh, corrector plate, is it called? Or? Um, yeah, yes. On the corrector plate itself, it's gonna be basically like like big thumb screws now, so you don't have to sit there with a little screwdriver worry about scratching the lens or anything like that. But uh, Dan's definitely gonna uh, show you guys how to do it, and then we're actually gonna collimate the scope itself with a laser and everything, and this wonderful Hotech setup we have down here, thanks to uh, Camera Concepts and Telescope Solutions and Stony Brook for letting us use the equipment. Uh, Jeff, Maria, Robert, and. Uh, cool. Dan and Philip and everyone down there, guys. Like I said, Camera Concepts, Telescope Solutions in Stony Brook, New York. Say hi to all the guys. Come on down if you have any questions. Dan's there on most Thursdays now. But uh, I'm going to let Dan take uh, the lead here, guys, and show you what's going on with the Bob's Knobs and the collimation. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about the, the Hotec a little bit later. So we're just going to get this out of the way. But you don't need this to collimate your telescope. Now what collimation is, is making sure that your corrector plate, your secondary, which is right behind this little plastic piece, is a mirror behind you. And your primary mirror in the back, making sure that they're all aligned in a way so you can achieve perfect focus. Okay, so it's real important to make sure that all these things are done. Now you can do this with a star test out in the field. And I do that whenever I had my Schmidt cat screen every single time, right before I was doing any even viewing or imaging, I did it all the time. And what Bob's Knobs does, like Charlie said, was you don't have to sit there with at nighttime with either a screwdriver or even worse, an Allen key, and try and do this, and then all of a sudden, 10 o'clock at night, you just scratch, you just scratch a corrector. And what Bob's Knobs does, does is the worst that'll happen is you might get some fingerprints, which you could easily get off with a piece of uh, 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 lint-free uh, microfiber or uh, lint-free uh, pec pads. Um, so what you're going to do here is you're going to take these three screws off one at a time and replace them with the correct Bob's knobs. Now Bob's knobs are different for every different type of scope. So make sure that you get the right ones. If you go to bobsknobs.com, it will lay out what Bob's knobs you need to uh, correctly get for your, your telescope. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to start by taking the screws out. Now be very, very careful in the beginning. It's a screwdriver or an Allen key, so be very, very careful. Two, we're going to move this out of the way so it gives me a little room. We'll talk about this later. And guys, one other thing. I'm going to step back in the camera here for a second. Yeah, you want to do it, obviously, when the scope is in this position. You don't want to do it when it's vertically, you know, vertical. You want to do it when it's horizontal. It, you know, it gives you a better chance of not scratching it, actually, if you do it uh, horizontally, not vertically. Exactly. Vertically. You don't want to have it down here working on top of the thing. You want to kind of do it like this for the first time. And for doing the Bob's knobs, you want to do one at a time. If you just install them the first time, take out one screw, put the Bob's knob in. Do the other screw, do another Bob's knob. So you really want to do it one at a time. But I'm going to step out and let Dan take over. Okay. Screwdriver. Screw. Unscrew. You may hear some rattling. It's okay. okay. Don't worry. If you hear something smash, then you got a problem. I'm going to step in and give him a hand. Yeah, I just wanted to drop that screw There's on There's your screw. Here's the Bob's knob, guys. And just, I had to call... Show Whoa! Him. I had to call up a little closer. That's a Bob's knob. All it is... Little thumb screw, guys. Little thumb screw to replace those nice little screws, especially when you're with uh, Celestron. Has uh, Phillips head screws there. So you just want to tighten it up, just hand tighten it for now. You're gonna worry about the collimation later. Okay? Yeah, and we'll do that because I just tripped over it, so you know. You ready for now? Oh yeah. Take the second one out. Do this for a living, I know. <laughs> Oops. Yeah. Once again, guys, yeah, I wanna thank Jeff, Maria, Robert, Philip, and Dan, and everybody at Camera Concepts and Telescope Solutions in Stony Brook. 
Thanks, uh, Jeffy, letting us use your equipment. There you go, that's two. Alright, take the other one out, I'll give you the last one. And do yourself a favor, guys, always save your screws, just oh, in I case. Am. I am. That's the sec that's the last one. There you go. Don't ever have to put a screwdriver on that, but again, collimation now, guys, just done with your thumb screws by And that's the installation, yeah, that's it. That's the installation of the Bob's knobs. That's how simple these things are. So now, because we just moved the secondary mirror that's behind here all over the place, you're definitely not aligned. So in order for you to get focused, we need to make minute adjustments to these knobs in order to make sure that this secondary is equal an angle to everything else. That's the biggest thing. If not, like Dan said, guys, you won't get good focus. and won't get focus at all. And your observation actually won't, won't be clear either. It'll be all fuzzy and you won't be able to see anything. And I know we're, we're, we're being a little... Uh, yeah, what do you need? We're being a little... Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're actually doing a, like, a kind of live thing right now. Yeah, this so, is a live video, so, so this is going to be a little bit ad-libbed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you... So what's going to happen... I'll show you right now. And slowly. Images. Okay, so what's going to happen is you're going to get something like this. When you try and focus something, that's what you're going to get. And that's an uncollimated, that means your secondary is twisted and it's not equal to the rest. The primary. That when you got a center, it's uh, actually that's not even that great to be honest with you. But it's it's more it's better. It's more better. It's better than the other one. That is more of a collimation uh, that you're gonna get. Now with a laser, with a uh, Schmidt cast grain like we're gonna use later, you can get this really, really, really good and really close. So it's very, very important, especially when you're doing photography. You're not gonna get any of those egg shaped or out of focus stars, stars in yeah. your in your frame when you do this. You gotta be you gotta you gotta do this. Uh, yeah. I would say every time that you that you image, you would do this. Yeah, especially an important imaging session. Okay, and we're gonna we're gonna pause for one second. We're gonna set this stuff up, and we're gonna get this ready for collimation. Okay, so this is what we're starting off with. This is the the Hotec uh, Advanced CT Laser Collimator. Uh, you get it for about four hundred dollars, um, but this is what we use in the shop to collimate. Um, Collimate your your uh, Schmidt Cassegrain. Uh, you can use it if I, I, I anything under seven inches. You can use it because what happens is the baffles uh, get in the way, um, so it won't it won't have enough room to get the lasers out of the tube. So you can see, and I'll show it to you in a second. There's a couple laser points here. Um, so it's it's a really it's a really 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 good way to do it. It's it takes a little time, but it gets it dead on. Um, I'm going to shut the lights off one second to see what, what, see what I'm talking about. Um, this is, again, this is not a totally collimated thing. I'll show you what it is in a little bit. And uh, we'll turn it off and we'll go to the next one. Hey, all right. So, so we got some little lighting things going on here. So don't be afraid. We're going to turn off the lights. We're going to show you what the laser looks like and what an uncollimated, unfocused uh, laser would look like. Um, if we go to the collimator right now, and the lights are off. So, so this is a way out of whack uh, collimation. And try just watch your face for a second. So, so basically, you can actually see where the center obstruction kind of is blocking some of the laser here. Uh, so, what you want to start off with is, and and I won't go too into. If you want to know more in depth on on how to use the laser Hotec collimator. Um, you go to hotech.com and there's really a good uh, PDF on it. Uh, so you want to make sure that, number one, these lines are in the same length. So there's numbers over here. I know you can't see them, but there's numbers one, two, three, four, and it goes back to one. So you want the circle, the, the circle kind of concentric around your main laser here. Okay. Now there's numbers on each side here. There's numbers on each side here. So they both, if they're both at three, the end should both be at three. So you're going to do a couple iterations, and you need a good, um, and this comes with the, the head, and you're going to move these things up and down and right and left to get them in the right spots. 
once you're in the right spot, now you get the return beams. Now you see the return beams are all out of whack because we're not all set up yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to get this thing set up and then you're going to see what a proper collimation looks like. Okay? Okay, so we're back and after a couple of trials and tribulations, we got this thing collimated pretty, pretty good, but it's almost perfect as far as I'm concerned. Um, so let me just go over a little bit of the procedure. I'm not going to go really in depth to it. Um, so you got your Hotec collimator here. Okay, you're going to start at setting number one. Okay, and you're not going to have these outer three laser diodes on. You're just going to have the one in the center. Okay, now what's going to happen is you... Is it recording? Okay. Okay, so, so I moved it a little bit, but you want them to be at the same value. So you're going to take right here, you got two different controls here. You got one that goes moving these vertical lines right and left. Okay, and then you got one that moves these horizontal lines up and down. Okay, so after a couple of iterations of moving it up and down and right to left, you're also using your slow motion controls as well to keep them on these parallel rails here. This vertical parallel rail, this horizontal parallel. So you want them at the same value. That's the first one. Once you get there after a couple of iterations of going back and forth with the telescope, now you're going to go to setting two. And I moved things a little bit, so I don't, you know, now, why is this like this now? Oh, because I moved everything. I moved everything here. So, so sorry, guys. I, I wanted to show you what it perfectly columnly looked. There you go. That's. That's pretty. That's close, but. But because I moved things a little bit, you know, it's, it's a little bit off. But this collimation on the scope is good. So what you want now, now you got the three laser diodes. The other three ones on. You see one did, that one disappeared. Yeah, did. That one disappeared. The bottom one disappeared. It's all reflecting back. So what you want to do is, and if we want to go to the back end of the scope. Come on back here. And you have another piece here that screws onto the back. This is a two inch uh, the back rear cap. And you see... Yep, you I see the it. dot, right? Oh, yeah. All right. So you're gonna, if you're out of focus, you see it's going to be three dots. Three dots. Uh -huh. Okay. So you want to get it tight and in focus. That's the first thing. Now, if we go back to the Hotec, I'm going to shut the light off again. Okay. Now you got three dots in your field as well. You want those three dots... in the same ring. So this is a six ring, five ring, four ring, three ring. Okay, depending on the width of your, your depending on the, the, uh, the size of your scope, this is an eight inch, this is gonna be usually either a six or a five, depending on how far you are away from, from your, uh, your, your primary mirror. Okay, so you want that in there. So how are you gonna do that? And I'm not gonna touch these. You're gonna go to the Bob's knobs that we just installed. And you're gonna go loosen one, tighten one. Loosen one, tighten one. Do not loosen all of them. Your secondary will fall. You'll break it and you'll be like, Declination Dan said to do it this way now. This is the way you do it. So you loosen one up, you tighten up the other one. You loosen up one, you tighten up the other one. And then you get this. Okay? Now again, I move things around a little bit. But this is all in the six ring, or it would be if I, was, if I didn't move everything. And this is all coincentric here. So that is a perfectly collimated Schmidt Cassegrain. Now, me, I'm a little, little crazy with collimation. So I'll sit there and I will actually, when I go out into the field, I will go and I'll field test this on a star. And if it's not perfect, although it should be, I'd still tighten it up a little bit. I play it around. And if you remember, the first picture that I showed you, it had the little off-centered donut you want that donut hole right in the center, so you make sure that when you, and as you get closer and closer to focus, you're making minute changes. You want that circle now. in the middle of the star, guys, the donut, concentric as possible, as round as possible. And that's it. That's all there is to it. Um, again, you don't need a laser. You could use a star test in the field. Um, this is definitely a, a, a lot more precise. Than you can that. use an artificial star too. You the boxes. Use a, yeah, there's a Hubble artificial star. Uh, Antares sells there's it. There's a couple. Hubble sells yeah. it. A couple other places sell it. But the issue with that is you need to be, a, depending on the Hubble star that you have, 
you need to post it like 100, 100 feet, feet away. Yeah, at least 100 feet. You know, feet. so if you don't have a 100 feet foot backyard, some of us don't. If you live in Manhattan, it's, that may not happen. Right. Um, but it is good to use. Um, or you can wait till nighttime and use a, use a real star and just don't use anything too bright. And that's all there is to it. All right, guys. I just want to thank Declination Dan for installing my Bob's knobs and doing the, uh, the collimation, making sure everything is good. I want to thank Jeff and everybody at Camera Concepts and Telescope Solutions in Stony Brook, Long Island for letting me use their equipment. And uh, guys, until we have something else, thanks for watching. Keep shooting. Keep educating. And keep having fun, guys. Thanks for watching. All right.